Yo, what's up everybody? We're live once again on a Saturday morning here in Los Angeles. Thank you for joining the stream. I hope you guys are ready to learn. I hope you guys are feeling okay. I um, hope everyone's doing alright on this weekend. Yeah, it's good to be back. I'm excited for this one. So, um, just as a, as a quick overview of what we're going to be doing today, basically I want to recreate a photo. I, I, that's kind of my thing. I, I, I love photography. I love doing um, 3D art, and when I can't go out and I can't travel and take all the film photography that I love doing, I like to, you know, keep that same style and that vibe here in 3D. So I'm going to be recreating a photo in 3D, and let me pull up that photo for you guys. God dang these cats, dude! These cats. <sighs> all right, let's see. Let's get this photo pulled up. You guys saw it. It's in the thumbnail. Let's load this in. All right. So I'm using Pure Ref to reference these photos. And this is what we're going to recreate. I've already done a little bit of the work here, um, doing some of the modeling of the, the, the street lamp and whatnot. And we're going to be talking about how to do these wires and lay out these wires. There's a lot of different ways to do that. But we want to bring it to this final point by the end of the stream. And I'm going to give myself two hours to do this because, honestly, guys, well, there's a couple announcements, actually. This leads me into the announcements. Um, so I've talked about doing an HDRI, like a custom HDRI tutorial for a long time. And I think it's actually time that this thing comes out. And it's going to come out on Tuesday. And today is basically the the last of my time to finish that tutorial so i'm gonna be sitting in this chair for the next freaking 12 hours so i just want to make sure i get enough work done on the hdri tutorial so i'm giving myself two hours on this to get a, a really nice look and a nice final image um also as as another announcement i'm actually speaking um on maxon uh, maxon is holding basically like a an event on Seagraph and I'm gonna be speaking about how to do like a complete workflow when you're trying to put in your like 3D objects into your live action footage. Let me actually show you guys. If you go to maxon.net, it's the front page right here, the, the 3D and motion design show, Seagraph edition. So my my uh, my class my presentation is actually, I think, the first one up on Tuesday. Let's let's find out more. You guys definitely need to show up to that. It's going to be really fun, and there's going to be a, a live Q&A right after the fact. Um, so let's see if we can't find the overview. Um, oh, is this not what we want? Maxon 3D. How do you, how do you go to the... See, I should know this. Find out more. Should be here. Here we go. 3dmotionshow.com. 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is my class. Okay, so I'm, yeah, it looks like Max on News and Announcements at 8.30 and right at 9 a.m. The Secret to Photo Real Visual Effects with me at 9 a.m. So I will see you guys there. That's Tuesday. Lots going on this week. Um, so let's just jump into this and, and start figuring this thing out. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining. It's good to see everybody in here. Who, who's in here actually, before we hop in Christian, what's going on? Good to see you. Any familiar faces? I saw Brett was in the stream last week, but I missed him. I don't want to miss him again. Ah, oh, welcome. Welcome everybody. A lot of familiar faces. Awesome, sweet. So I'll I'll try and check the chat, um, you know, as I can as we as we power through this. Um, <laughs> Scorn, thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, "Kama must be a saint, letting uh, letting me stream every single week. I know mine is for letting me use all my Saturday evenings uh, for watching stuff. So thank you." Enjoy your sandwich. I love you. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in. 
So the challenge here definitely is these wires. There's a lot of like little details in here as far as like these little rivets and bits and whatnot that we need to get into just a little bit. Um, but there's a lot of tiny pieces that need to be modeled, but th these are pretty simple. They're just kind of like rectangles and cubes beveled out. So we can spend maybe 20 minutes working on the modeling that needs, you know, like the remainder of the modeling that needs to be done. Ruben, appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know what that says other than yes. And maybe you agree or something like that. <laughs> but thank you, sir. <laughs> um, you guys are awesome. So, yeah, let's spend the next 20 minutes just talking about modeling out these little modules and stuff and how you can quickly do that in C4D. And, you know, there's already one, like these ones I already have modeled. Um, like up here, you guys can see I have this kind of modeled out. It's very basic modeling, you know. And I do go over a lot of this in my Seagraph presentation too. We model a newspaper stand, which actually was one of the uh, one of the streams here. And there's another little module here that I just put together before the stream, and it's just a very basic, you know, cylindrical object, beveled out, extruded out, and all that good stuff. Oh, is there a raw photo download link? Um. Let me see if I can upload it to the Discord server really quick so that you guys can follow along. Um, let's see. All right, so if you guys go to the Discord server, the link is right down in the description. I'll drop it into general, general chat, okay? And let me just let me just drag that in real quick. Let's see. So you guys can follow along with me. Oh god. Okay, it's a hundred megabytes. Wait, no, it's not. It's twenty four megabytes. I'm going to drag in the janky phone picture that I took. You guys can get the same vibe. It's this one right here. I actually like this look a little bit better. Um, so this will be like the lighting I'm going for. I like the lens flare and everything. But, you know, this picture here is just a little larger for zooming in and getting that detail. I can upload the picture a little later once the stream is over but um, yeah let's let's take like 15 20 minutes and just model out some of these little modules that we can copy and paste throughout all of this you know the detail really counts when you're trying to recreate a photo and match it perfectly in CG um, all of the little details really count in every step so especially with modeling you know you want to model all the details and get all that good stuff in there um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. I've said it enough. Let's just go for it. Let's see if we can adjust this window. All right. Sweet. Okay. Wait, why is it? Ah, it needs to be on top. Window. Um, image. Always on top. Sweet. Okay. All right. Let's start with like the biggest little piece right here. This little box. All right, so we'll just make a cube for that. And I always have a figure in my scene because it helps me determine the scale of things. And again, we can always adjust the scale later, but it's nice to have something in the beginning to help us to like guide our 
our modeling process. Maybe something like that. All right. And this looks very, very straightforward. The only thing we want to do is make sure we're beveling our edges. All right. So I'm just going to make this cube editable. You can hit NB to switch to wireframe mode. And it looks like it has like a little door up here, a little access port. So I'm just going to hit KL and extrude some of these faces here. One, two, and three. I'm gonna hit D and just scale that out. So why it does this, I'm not really sure, but that needs to be bridged. So I'll do uh, MB in edge mode and just bridge those. There's probably a better way of doing this. And then MD will fill the polygon holes. Or it should at least. I don't know why it why it isn't. Well maybe we undo that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know why that's the case. There's probably some checkbox I need to hit. Weird. I do not know why. So I wonder if there's some sort of setting I probably just don't have checked. There it is. Okay, the maximum angle. Polygons under maximum angle just needs to be cranked up above 90, and that'll work properly. All right, troubleshooting. That is the work of an effects artist is troubleshooting all day long. Let's give the back a little bit more detail. So we'll come in here um, and hit MS. MW I think that's it's actually fine how it is it looks like there's some like rivets here for wires to go into so we can just spawn some cylinders to bust those out but before we do let's make sure all of our stuff is beveled beveling your your edges are gonna catch the light in a really nice way and you're definitely gonna want to do that um, so I'm holding shift to give it a bevel modifier and we'll take that bevel offset down really low to like 0.05 and we'll give it like Yeah, something like that. And holding control, let's make a cylinder, and that's going to spawn the cylinder right in place of that cube. And we want it to be plus X. And let's actually solo this. I'm using magic solo. Very handy. 
we'll scale that down. Something like that. Let's come in here and just make sure we have a nice like filleted edge here. So I'm just going to check that box. And by default, it actually looks really nice. And we can actually clone this. So we'll start up here. Actually, no, let's start down here. And I'm going to hold Alt and clone linearly every inch, every every two, uh, every 1.5 inches. And we'll just drag the slider up. And there you go. You got some nice little circuit box. We don't need to worry about this side because, you know, the angle of our image doesn't include that side. So you don't have to worry about it. So I'll group these and just call this circuit box. Cool. All right. Um, so these rungs were made from, uh, from like a spline and a, a, like a circle spline basically. And that's in a lathe object here or in a sweep rather. And we'll be doing that for all the wires and stuff, but let's figure out any other modules we need to create. So I have this one here made up and that's just copied and pasted all around the model. Let's make this box here. That's a cool looking piece. So let's try that. Okay. Let's spawn a sphere. Or I'm sorry, a cube and we'll scale it way down. And it looks like it's a little, it's like on the flat side. And then a bit more rectangular like this. Awesome. Uh, Sid, dude, heck yeah, man. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate you. He says, hey, Clint, just wanted to thank you for these amazing live streams. I've learned a lot in the past months. Thank you again, buddy. Stay safe. You too, Sid. Um, I'm really glad that you've learned a lot. I'm glad that you guys are sticking through this whole thing. Um, I know that these can go pretty long. Um, but it, it really does mean a lot. You guys coming back every single week, hanging out with me and learning together. That's, that's the whole thing, man. That's the whole point, learning and growing together. I love it a lot and we keep each other accountable, right? I know you guys keep me accountable. That's for sure. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be learning as much because I, you know, I'm forcing myself to learn so that I can teach you guys all the stuff and hopefully we can all learn together. So it's been really cool. And like the weekly challenges have been super fun. Um, and it's only going to get better. I promise you, it will only grow into a stronger thing together. All right. So let's create this little module right here. It looks like, all right, this is gonna be fun. So let's start with this, like scaled down. This is like this main piece across the top. Um, and Ruben, <laughs> thanks for the super chat. Yes, I would come to Houston for sure, man. I would, I'd travel anywhere. I don't care where it is. Um, and I know Jake is living in Texas. If you guys are fans of corridor and know Jake, he's, he moved to, uh, San Antonio. So Texas trips, our, uh, are, are in our future. Most definitely. All right, let's scale these in, uh, MW is extrude inner. Boom, we'll bevel it, MT, or no, is it M, MT, no, got my, got my shortcuts mixed up, MS, bevel MS, so let's bevel it out like this and adjust some of the stuff, we don't need all the subdivisions, um, I need to figure out, how do I, there it is, this is the offset something like that. So if you can see a reference based off of this here, it might be a little intense. So we can uh, hit UY to grow our selection and we're going to scale it. But if we scale it, you can see how like it actually scales up this bit here. We want this to remain flat. 
So I'm just not going to scale it on the Y axis. And I think that'll do it. Yeah. Or wait. Yeah, no, that's good. So let's just scale it up a little bit and then I'll scale it. Boom, right there. Okay. And then it looks like it's kind of getting inset. So if we set both of these, MW for extrude inner, and we'll bevel it again. So MS to bevel it down. And we'll work that offset again. Let's try like 0.1. 0.2 yeah something like that so it's like a little it looks like a box that holds a bunch of wires or something now it has these screws on the side of it so what we could do is chop it whoa okay let's maybe go into side view here and grab our knife tool where are you knife tool? We got to be in edge mode for knife tool. Line cut. Yeah, we'll do a li little line cut. I'm just going to hold shift to make a, a straight line. And we'll do it one more time holding shift. I'm hitting escape to get out of the tool. And then once I have those lines cut, all right, I'm going to make this little bit here. I can select both of them and then just move them around so that they're kind of in the middle and you can even scale them like this so that we have a little bit of room to add another little bit here where our screw is going to sit so I'm holding shift to grab both of those edges and um, you know since this stream isn't planned a lot of stuff randomly comes to the top of my head at random moments okay um, so I just want to note that like you guys can do this in any program. If you're in Blender or if you're in Maya or 3ds Max or obviously I'm in C4D, whatever. Like you guys can. This is all basic. This is stuff that translates across all 3D programs. So don't don't uh, don't feel discouraged if you are using Blender. Please follow along. Okay, so we have our base geometry here. Like that that works for me. We're gonna bevel these edges. That's really gonna take this thing to the next level is when we bevel the edges. So let's see here. Okay. We could do this probably. I'm gonna use a couple bevel modifiers. So let's grab some edges. I think U B or no, U L is loop selection. What about ring selection? I thought it was U B. Yeah, it is U B. All right, I'm going to deselect these inside edges and I'm just want to select the edges that are really going to be beveled like this here. There's a big bevel. This here is a large bevel um, and I'll save the rest for just a smaller bevel. So with those selected, I'm going to set the selection, All right? We can always go uh, select and where is it? Set selection right there. And I'll drop the bevel modifier on there, boom, and drop that selection tag we just made in there. So now it's only beveling those little bits. So we can do 0.1 and like 3, and then we can just take this up. So that actually works. 0.2, or maybe, maybe 0.15 or something. Oh, uh, if I'm saying your name right, she, C, C Um, you said super chat's not available in Vietnam. Can you donate anywhere right now? There is not really a place for that, but I am releasing my first digital prod, um, product, my first digital product on Tuesday with the HDRI custom tutorial. So at the end of that video, you guys will be able to purchase a um, an HDRI pack that I put together while making this tutorial and it's actually themed around like post-apocalypse um, battlefield style HDRIs so it's HDRIs taken from like inside of destroyed helicopters or in tunnels or crashed airplanes or um, you know like Middle East kind of style so 
I think I'm going to sell it for like eight bucks or something. That right now is probably the cheapest way to donate. Um, if you cannot do a super chat here, otherwise I do sell photography. The link is in the description and you actually get something physical for your purchase. Um, they're all printed on super, super nice paper. Um, it'll, it'll last through the ages and everything, but okay, enough, enough marketing here. Let's, let's get back to this module. So we've made that bevel modifier, right? To get those edges, the larger edges. And we could even make another one for these, these four to really make those. Let's, let's try it. So I'm going to deselect those two, deselect those two. Let's set this selection. So that's a new one. I'm going to control drag this bevel, drop our new selection in there. Okay. And let's actually go back to our other modifier, deselect these edges and update. All right. And let's just make sure I think the hierarchy matters. Uh, not in this case. Okay. So let's turn them off and just focus one at a time. All right, so I'm just going to update that selection there. Why is it not updating? Let's try this. Let's try this one more time. All right, so we have those bits. Let's set that selection. And we'll drop that on there. Cool. Going back in, let's get these guys. I think we're past our 15, 20 minutes already. But we still have a couple more things, all right? Um, let's set that selection. Let's make a new bevel modifier holding shift. And we'll drop that selection on there. Um, let's see. Why does it, why is it getting those edges? We don't want those edges. Uh, it's so much troubleshooting. VFX is so much troubleshooting. My goodness. Let's maybe name this center outside. This one will be our center. Okay, great. This one will be our outside. Okay, so that's working. I just needed to get the naming down. So 0.3, and that's the reason we did that. So we can bevel this edge even further. Cool. So now we have both of those combined. And now for a third one, we'll do another bevel modifier, and that's gonna get everything. So we'll set it to point. Well, first let's make sure it looks right. Okay, so I'm gonna just solo that. And we'll do like 0 0.025. Just like that, so it's getting everything. And let's try turning on our other modifiers and boom, that looks nice. Let's just make sure this edge is all good. So we'll go like, I don't know, 0.25, and that geometry works. So I go over this in my CGraph presentation as well, um, how to do the multiple bevel modifiers on one object, and it really, really helps out. So now at this point, I'm just going to copy some of the, the nuts and bolts, right? So let's go ahead and just control drag the nuts and bolts, and I'm going to use a transfer tool to transfer it, boom, over to this object here and they should be chilling. Yeah. Right here. Okay. So I'll take this and we'll just kind of move it into place here. Okay. I'll use the axis center tool and we'll get the axis right there in the middle. 
boom perfect and let's just rotate this thing 90 degrees holding shift it's gonna snap on those angles and we'll scale it down Oop, make sure we scale on Y and scale it down So a lot of work, a lot of detail work goes into recreating a photo like this. So there's one there. I'm going to control drag to, to duplicate, holding shift as well to snap on those angles. And we'll bring it down here too. Just like that. All right. So we have both of those. We can control drag these over to this side. That's looking nice. Um, now it looks like there's these bigger little bolt sections here that we might have to deal with a little later, but this definitely gets us, um, something here. We can detail to the end of time, but we don't have all the time in the world. Let's, um, I might model these guys once we lay the wires, that way we know how big to make them. Um, let's maybe try doing like this bit here that's holding the wires to the actual pull. Okay. So let's group all this stuff first. I'll call this wire box and we can leave it, leave it where it is for now. So we're, we're building out all these pieces, right? So next, let's do this little like cylinder thing here. How are we going to make this? It looks like it's kind of hollow. Maybe we can make it from a couple different parts. That might be the best way to do this. So I'm seeing a cylinder. Let's do cylinder. We can make it plus X orientation right we'll scale it down so they're pretty they're pretty small it's probably something like this right it looks like it's sticking out like there something like that okay I'll give that 32 segments. Again, we'll hit NB for wireframe to see what's going on. Rotational segments, we, we can zero out. So let's make that editable. So that's like the base right here. It's very hard to see, but that's the base of this thing. And then this piece, I think we can just create um, with some custom geometry. So I'm holding control, and I'm going to spawn a, a cube, and it'll spawn it right in place of that cylinder okay so what I'm seeing here is something along these lines like this all right let's make that editable I'm gonna hit C all right now it looks like if I if I make some cuts here in line mode Let's grab both of these little bits here, okay? I'm gonna hit D for extrude. And we'll extrude this out. And we'll move them down. And it looks like they're also scaled down like this. And we want to orient each one of these bits here, we want to do per object manipulation. Hopefully this works. Nope. We got to do it by one by one. We want to rotate this 90 degrees and this other one by 90 degrees so that we can just extrude and touch down on that cylinder. So hitting D to extrude to get to that cylinder. And it looks like we want to extrude one more time and scale them in but don't worry about why we just want to scale them in like this and hitting I'm hitting s 
to snap my viewport to the object if it gets all off and you're like oh I can't find it you just hit S and it'll it'll line up Cinema 4D will also orient around anything that you have um, that your mouse is hovering over so when you're orienting around with your mouse I'm holding alt and clicking it's going to orient around this bit if you want to orient around uh, this cylinder you just hover your mouse over that bit <laughs> scribble of ofi life um scribble of life i appreciate you man i'm glad i'm glad you're enjoying this okay so we want to scale this sil or this cube a little bit so i'm just gonna let's see we want to scale it on the x something like that and you'll just set it in there and we'll probably add a bolt to fit right in there so let's go back to that wire box grab one of those nuts and bolts control drag and I'm gonna use the transfer tool to transfer it boom yeah that that works right here holding shift 90 degrees scale the crap out of this thing make sure you're scaling on Y so it's hitting everything and just sit it right in there and that's gonna look like a nice little bolt structure there the last thing we need to do is bevel our edges here and this technically I feel like this needs a cut it's not the best geometry to be honest with you guys my modeling skills are not the best I am kinda just getting by just by cheating so I'm gonna make a cut um, from here to here think or maybe I don't know what the best way to do this is yeah let's go to point mode and let's go to line cut let's go one there one there same here one there and one there Wait, why did it make a cut there? That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, it, oh, it's cutting through everything. Okay, the line tool is cutting through everything. So we have to make sure when we select the line cut, you do... Re, um, Restrict to selection, maybe? Uh, visible only. That's what we want. Visible only. So we're going to go inside to outside. Inside to outside. All right, and then let's bevel this thing. So holding shift, we'll throw that bevel modifier in there. It's going to look like some janky Star Wars aircraft. Um, but let's go like point one, point o oh two, and let's crank up the angle threshold. Ah, oh, man, I might I might undo those lines I made. Technically, the geometry isn't it's not sound, but it's such a tiny piece. And it just feels better already. Sweet. Hey, Chris. What's up, dude? What's up, Chris? If you guys don't know Chris, he runs Rocket Lasso and also does live streams, I believe, on Wednesday. Um, he's the dynamic master. So when it comes to, like, C4D uh, physics and dynamics and springs and connectors, he is the guy. Definitely check out his stuff. Um, good to have you, man. Good to have you. So we're making, uh, Chris, we're making this photo here. And for anyone else who just joined, we're recreating this photo. And we're modeling all these little tiny bits. Um, we should probably wrap that bit up here in the next five minutes or so. We can get So we can get to these wires. And I'm actually using a plugin called Topo Wire. 
or to topo wire. I think topo wire is probably how it's pronounced. And it's really cool. It's actually really easy to get dynamic wires going, but we might use a combination of that and just some straight up C40 splines because if you look closely, these wires are following a very specific path. And the topo wire is good for like a ton of wires, dynamic wires that just need to be like fit into your scene. You don't have too much control over them, but we're gonna need to actually control these wires. So we're gonna come in here with splines and just kind of like, you know, mock this up. Let's just wrap up this modeling section here. Um, let's see. Okay, we got this little guy, this connector guy. So let's go ahead and group all that stuff together. One, two, three. These guys, boom. We'll call that connector. Sweet. And that'll be duplicated a few times. Um, all right, anything else? Anything else that like really needs to be done modeling wise? We got these main like modules here and here and I th I think we're good actually. Like that can just be a rectangle or this little box duplicated and as far as like this stuff th those are all just cubes, you know? That's just cubes and cylinders. So let's set up our camera angle and let's start placing these objects and getting the wires correct. All right, because I think that that's just definitely going to take a minute getting these wires down. So let's let's get there. All right, so I know for a fact that I was on the ground when I took this. We are not underneath the ground here. So what I'm going to do is actually create a camera. All right. Um, there's a little camera button here. We can pilot the camera so we're inside. And let's put a constraint tag on it. So I'm going to right click and go, uh, where would it be? Rigging? Uh, protection, a protection tag. That's totally going to work for us. And we're locking things. It's locking down everything. I can't move it. I can't rotate or anything. So position, all right? Position, we want to lock just the Y axis. The X and Z, we want to be able to move around. Okay, and then the the rotation, we don't need to lock the rotation at all. So this keeps the camera on the ground, right? I can move basically any which way I want, but I can't go underneath the ground, right? That's So that's really going to help us here. I'm zooming out, and by zooming out, I'm walking backwards, and I know I took this on a 24 mil lens, so I'm going to go... 24 and just line it up here you know so it's probably now maybe maybe this is taller all right, let's try let's try 35. That way our uh, our angle isn't as extreme. But now I feel like now we gotta go we gotta go 24 because that's that's how the image was shot. I know it's also in two three, so we'll do uh, uh, what is it 900 by 600. It's a two three image. And a pro tip for you guys. There's a photographer, Mark Edward Harris. He actually put together. Um, uh, a photo book, one of my favorite photo books. It's called what is it? The uh, the way of the Japanese bath. It, absolutely incredible. I put some of his his images on my Instagram, and I went to his class. I went to one of his classes at Sammy's Camera, and he talked about um, your portfolio as a photographer. And he said one of like one of the most uh, professional looking, aesthetically looking things you can do when you're presenting your portfolio is keep your your aspect ratio for your photos consistent they should be all the same right so that's really why on my instagram um i try and keep my aspect ratio the same i'll either do two three which um this camera here is a nicromat ftn film camera this camera will 
um, take images at a two three aspect ratio, and you know I just I just don't edit them, and I upload them upload them in their native format. Same for you know my uh, my A seven my A seven R two, which I took this photo on. So this is a um, it, it also takes photos in two three. So you want to keep your aspect ratio consistent when you're putting together like your photography portfolio. That's a good good tip from from Mark Edward Harris. Check him out. He's on Instagram as well. Okay, um let's get this module box up a little higher. The circuit box, we'll move that up something like there. Um this where where are you? Okay. Oh, by the way, control shift Z will undo camera moves. This piece comes down to somewhere like here. And I'm actually going to draw some lines just to have it. I'm going to make a cylinder. And let's put that cylinder. Let's see here. Let's put the cylinder on plus X orientation. I am going to get the radius way down and just make it really long. This is going to help us framing, right? And then I'm going to hold control and go 90 with that. I believe that's how it's set up. It might be a, a bit harsher of an angle, you know? I feel like it's a bit harsher of an angle. Something like that. And then I'm, I'm willing to bet if I hold control, make another one, and we go 90, that these guys are going off into the distance here. So I can move this like up. And that gives us just an idea of like what our framing should look like. I'm gonna zoom in, get a little closer. And somewhere along these lines here, I might I may have zoomed in. I may not have been at a full 24. We can try 28. Remember, we want, we want to see the back of this uh, of this circuit box, not the direct side, but just like the the back side there. So that kind of gives us we're we're all, we're getting these clues in our image as to you know what's going on, and also this street light might be angled a bit more towards the street. So if I hop out of the camera. And I'm just going to turn that off in viewport. We zoom in. Let's grab this bit. It's actually our entire lamp post. So we want to rotate our lamp post from the exact middle. You can see how it's way off. When I'm rotating this, you see that? I want to be able to rotate it around the, the, the center of this pole, zero, zero. So what we can do is, I wonder if this works. If I hit the axis gizmo and reset PSR, no, nope, that moves everything. So then what I would do, you can actually just type the numbers in 000 with the axis tool selected. And what on earth, for some reason, zero is, is off center for us. Huh, that's not right. Okay, so for the lamp post. Maybe if we go to the the, um, the axis center tool, maybe we can use this and say we want to go all the way towards X. All right, so we'll go all the way towards X, 100%, and we'll go to the very bottom, so minus Y. That takes us to about that point, but I feel like that's still not zero, zero, because if we rotate this, you can see how it disappears. It goes into the structure. It's just weird. I feel like I don't know how to reset this. Um, X should go to zero. Yeah, that's not zero. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do this by eye because I don't have the answer. I bet you Chris knows. All right, I'm going to hit L. Yep, gizmo tool selected. 
and we're just going to get this right to the center point the dumb way we're doing it the dumb way all right boom that's at the center and now when we rotate you can see how it just it works all the way around so the whole point of this let's go back to the camera and just orient this a little bit over also one thing to note this light is just off center but in our image the light is pretty far out to the left so I think we can actually scale our lamppost down a bit and this is a case actually where our gizmo we want our gizmo to be um, not where it is actually so maybe we can go into lamp post select both of those group those and change this axis let's hop out of camera we can just scale it down a little bit and move it out a little bit we'll see if that works for us and we'll go back to the lamp post and just rotate it that feels about right something like like that I can get rid of these guys sweet I think this is gonna be pretty fun get some nice volumetric light going here and we can always reframe this that's the thing is like I'm just kind of framing it up so I can see what's going on and then after the fact you know find the best angle you don't have to match the photo exactly uh, but Ruben hey thanks for the super chat buddy appreciate you man um, yeah all you guys dropping these super chats it helps out a lot it, it really does um, doing these streams takes a lot of time I got a lot of prep work and um, you know I'm obviously working on this during the week too so it all really helps I appreciate you guys Mm. Okay, so you guys are telling me I was in object space. I need to be in world space when I zero out my gizmo. Good good tip. That was a basic one. I should know that. All right, um, Renee. I think that's how you say your name. Um, what made me want to specialize in Cinema 4D? I'm starting in Blender, but when I'm seeing pros like you, uh, makes makes me question. There's going to be pros in every program, I promise you. Um, and I'm certainly not a pro. I'd say I'm intermediate, but I appreciate that. Um, there, there are going to be pros in every single program. There's always going to be someone better you, better than you, and there's going to be someone not as skilled as you, no matter where you're at in life. So don't let that discourage you. Um, I, I know that Ian Hubert is a master when it comes to Blender. So you just need to check out his stuff. Ian Hubert, um, uh, I think Mr. What is it, Robot Soup? I think is his channel. Just look up Ian Hubert. You'll see. Um, he's absolutely, absolutely incredible. And um, yeah, if Blender's free, so you know why, why not dive in? But I love Cinema because I've been using it for a long time. It was my first 3D, like real 3D program. And yeah, like I'm, I'm just very familiar with it. I like a lot of the tools that it has. All the MoGraph tools are just like the best. Um, its dynamics are really easy makes it very simple um i freaking love it yeah and they hooked me up too freaking um paul at uh at maxon what a what a guy yeah he helps me out helps support the passion so i, I appreciate them very much maxon is a really cool company it's, it feels like a family it's nice okay let's get these little modules in place God dang, Ruben, thanks, dude. Um, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time, man. This this stream will be up on YouTube uh, when I when I when I cut it off in like the next hour and a half or so. Um, so come back and check it out. But thanks, brother. Catch you later. All right. Um, let's uh, let's grab this connector, and we see that there's lines up here, something like this, All right? And we we'll work these 
these little bits in. Let's go back to world space. Set that gizmo, right? We'll zero that out. Boom. Now I can move it around this pole and it'll just perfectly stick. All right, so the wires. Let's see the wires. What's the best way to do the wires? I'm thinking these thin ones, like one, two, three, four, five, six. All of this stuff, we're just going to, I think we're just going to use splines and duplicate these splines. So let me hop into top view real quick then. I'll get rid of my plane just for a second so I can actually get a better view of what's going on. I can hide our figure so I can see what's going on. Okay. That module's there. Okay, that this, this is all fine. Now let's let's see. All right. So let's go ahead and grab the spline pen tool and we actually let's see we can go linear on these on these splines and I'm thinking we're gonna start everything from zero zero all right we can always adjust that later and then I'm just gonna take this out in a direction maybe this direction who knows and we'll hit escape and we'll just make sure that this hits zero cool now back in our main view that's I'm gonna be on the ground alright so let's just make sure we select the whole thing in object mode and I'm gonna hit S to snap to it and we'll pick it up and we'll pick it up sweet alright so now we can actually control boom um, this this spline here um, and I'm probably gonna control it in top view and just see what it does in perspective view okay so it looks like they're trailing off in I don't know this direction here something like this Right, and we want to thicken up these wires. These wires aren't just um, splines. They need to be geometry because when we render this thing, let's let's give it a, a quick render. All right, let's um, let's give it some sort of evening HDRI image. Let's try this Sunset Campus. And it should. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. I'm just going to grab... Um, I have two Octane Skies going on. One of them is just a background image set to Visible Environment. So I'm going to change this color to... You know, something like that. And let's... Let's actually hide it for a second so we can see our first HDRI and it's dark. This is an old HDRI. Oh, it's power set to point 0.1. There we go. And then we'll bring our background back in. Yeah, something like something like that. We can move the HDRI around but I think it was at the right angle actually it's kinda of backlit yeah I'm just gonna bring 
No, this is fine. This, this, this is a perfect example of what we're going for, okay? So you can see how we have the spline, but we don't see it in our in our render. It's very easy to fix. So you basically want to thicken it up. And you can do so by dropping in a circle spline. Okay, let me hop out of camera. And I'll actually check camera. So back in, in Octane, I'll make sure check camera is unchecked. And then we'll hop out. And now our view, our, uh, the live viewer is still live. Or something's happening to it. I don't know what happened, um, but let's just move this thing up here. All right, so we're going to move the circle spline generally uh, up in the area of the spline. We'll rotate it. I'm going to pause the live viewer. Let's go 90 degrees holding shift, okay, and I'm going to scale this thing down. And this will determine the thickness of our spline, okay? So with both the spline and the circle selected, I'm going to do what? Control Alt, okay? And then we'll throw it into a sweep. And now when we adjust the thickness of this spline, you can actually see it show up as geometry here in the render. Let's reload it. Yeah, there it is. So we'll head back into camera view. We'll check the camera. Yeah, and there you go. We got that geometry showing up. Let me throw a like a darker texture on everything. Just so we can see our silhouette. All right. So I know we're going to have a ton of wires, so I'm going to make a folder called wires. And we'll do one called uh, thin, thin wires. And then we'll have a thicker wires folder. But we'll do that later. And then we can do like these modules and circuit boxes and wire boxes and connectors and fasteners we, we'll just put this in its own geometry and we'll call this like uh, detail and then we have the lamp post the telephone pole and ladder rungs ladder rungs can go in detail I usually try and keep my stuff as organized as possible when doing all of this um, so how's everybody doing you guys following along enjoying yourselves give me a little thumbs up in the chat if you guys are Hanging in, all right? Feel free to ask any questions. Just at me here, at Punisher. Um, I see a question. Have I ever used Houdini? I have not. I have not used Houdini. I'm spending my points in Unreal Engine right now. That's what I'm learning. Tila. Yeah, here's the thing. Topo wire? Definitely, all right? I definitely feel I feel it for sure but here's the thing top of wire you don't have control over stuff like like this where it turns and bends and everything right and goes into very specific points um I I, I wonder though I wonder like hmm Because with, with topo wire, I'm sorry, I was referencing something you guys couldn't even see. These bends and turns and stuff. Or even more intricately, like these wires that are wrapping around the, the thicker wires or the combination of wires. So you have doubled up wires and stuff. I'm just wondering if I can have the control with topo wire. Um, so this is, this is a tough one. You know, we can, we can go down two different paths at this point. You know, like what's the best way to do this? I feel like maybe top of wire for some of this stuff, but like these loops. Yeah. Maybe. Hmm. 
Hmm. Alex, thank you, buddy. Thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. Thanks for helping out. Um, I'm excited to see the results too. Enjoy that coffee. Yeah. All right. So it looks like we don't have enough control with top of wire. It's what at least what the chat is agreeing with. Cause it's really cool. Top of wire is awesome. Like, you know, you can do some cool stuff. Let me just show you guys. So basically, if I throw these two spheres, um, if I make a top of wire, and then I throw these two spheres underneath, it's going to make like this geometry. Right, and then you can actually take this and let's see, you can sag it, which is super cool. It'll sag down. So I feel like this is good for like background stuff or just for, you know, whatever the heck. This is, this is awesome. You can take the direction and kind of pinch them together and maybe get rid of some wires. If you don't want the danglies, you can distance uh, limit the distance. At some point, they should go away, but not for me. Um, and then it's actually you can make it uh, dynamic too, which is really cool. Mm, Jamie, that's a good question. Ooh, Matthew, that's a good question too. Oh man, lots of good questions. All right, so I got I got three legit questions here. Um, we'll start from the top. How do you select an inspiration to work upon? For example, this, this photo here. This photo I took while I was on a walk. I knew I, I saw this and I was like, this is cool. I was listening to some music. Actually, the song that's playing in my bone phones is the same song I was listening to when I took this picture that's weird. Anyway, um, you know, I was just inspired by the, the, the landscape around me. I have been trying to learn unreal engine for the last month and a half. I've been working at that. So like these things are on the top of my mind. I'm focusing on those things. So those things are kind of up at the top of my brain. I see something I'm like, Ooh, I want to recreate this. I want to make this look real. I want to set this to a song. I want to make like a, a moody scene. So, um, that's definitely how I'm going around, like taking pictures and coming up with that stuff. Next question. What games am I excited for that are coming out this year? I'm hyped for Halo Infinite. Um, okay, so I am playing The Last of Us 2 right now, and it is so good. Oh, my God. I I am in love with that game right now. I cannot wait to see what happens. I'm like seven, eight hours in, maybe nine hours in. Yeah, it's so good. And then Ghost of Tsushima. I am very excited for, but I'll play that after I beat Last of Us 2. Um, and then Jamie, last question. Hey man, thanks for the stream. What do you do um, when a, a uh, okay, what do you do when a project burns you out? Example, the storyboard changes when you're already deep into the project. Thanks for the wholesome C4D tips. All right, so yeah, uh, definitely take breaks. Take as many breaks as you can. Get outside. Try and work out. That helps me out a lot. Get active. Get your sweat on. That helps me out a whole bunch. Um, Just in general, as far as life goes. But when a project burns me out and I'm just not enjoying it, like, it's tough. Yeah, there's some jobs and some, some times where it's just like, I'm not enjoying this process. But I promise you're going to feel really good when you get it done. It's going to be like a huge weight off your shoulders if it's one of those projects. Um, I know I've had a number of those in my life for sure. Um, I think we all have. But um, 
find, try and find the thing that you enjoy and find the value in what you're doing. If you can say to yourself, oh, like, I may not enjoy what I'm doing right now, but I'm learning and like I'm getting better for the future, then just hang on to that. You know what I mean? And if a, and if a storyboard gets changed in the middle of something, like, I don't know, maybe maybe that's like something you negotiate, you renegotiate. Like, look, I did all this work. This is what we negotiated on. Now you changed everything and I have to do all this extra work. So that's extra fee, you know? So you can like, the more you freelance or do your job, the more you can like kind of work those things in your contract and stuff or just, I think the more communication, the better with that kind of stuff. Um, and these bone phones, these are Trex Air um, Aeroplex. I'll type it in here. And they're the best. I I don't have to say anything else. <laughs> they really are the best. Okay, going back in. Let's um let's let's add a background. All right, this is the image. We don't need that. I'm just gonna add a white background. So we can see where our wires are going. Okay. And I'll just take this down. To like 0.4 so we can see what's going on all right and let's start duplicating these wires because after this is just texturing and lighting and we'll be good okay so let's see and all right let's uh let's zero out our gizmo Okay, and I'm just going to start copy-pasting this thing, start dragging it around. So we have one about the base of, of this guy coming down. We have one a little lower. Um, there's basically three in between the light post and this module here so there's one above there and then probably around there cool awesome so we can adjust the angle of these guys so let's grab these splines one two three go to top view We'll grab the endpoints, okay, for all three of those. Hopefully, it should be all three. Hmm. There we go. Okay. And it looks like, let's see, I just want to get these in place here. And we'll angle them down because there's no way these lines are going straight. So it's probably something like that. And they are going to the corner of the image, actually. Something like this. Right? And we can adjust each one a little bit. Something like that. And like that. Now, you, you always want to use real world reference when, you know, recreating these photos because real life has a ton of details that you're not going to know off the top of your head. So um, even just like the randomness in the wire and like all these little details and stuff that that just goes such a long way. All right. I'm reading the chat here. I'm gonna going back and forth. I appreciate you guys staying in here. <laughs> okay. 
Let's keep adding these these wires. One, two, three. All right, so we got these three. What about this one up here? Let's duplicate, holding control, and move this guy up about there. Okay, and then we can hop back into our top view and grab this spline here and just come up with it just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Re-render the scene. Cool. And we have some up here, and we actually might use top of wire for these guys just to give them a little bit of sag. Um, we could do it with a bezier curve, but I think top of wire is going, going to actually help us out in this situation. So let's hop out of the camera for a second. So let's see. Boom. And let's make a cube or even a null. Now we can do a cube. All right. Let's bring the cube up. This will be one of our points up here. And we're going to control drag our cube out this direction and maybe down a little bit. I'll make that top of wire modifier there drop the cubes in okay and the wire the, the point count will just set to one I guess by two goes to default by two and we will drop our curvature down like this and let's hop into our camera and see what that looks like okay so taking that second cube let's bring it down Somewhere right in there. Now if we adjust the curvature, we can really get more sag with that. So it's not just a straight line. Okay, and then let's make sure it's renderable. Looks like it is, that looks great. I'm gonna throw the same material on there, cool. It looks like there is another set just above okay so let's duplicate and move those up and now we adjust the top of wire uh, let's see the distance limit so I feel like I'm getting something off here with the distance limit um maybe I need okay, maybe I need more wires. There we go. There it is. Sweet. And then we'll do a third one up top. So control dragging those cubes. And we'll make sure we put more wires. Yikes. Um, what editorial am I using? Abdul, are you are you asking me or somebody else? Editorial, what do you mean like this reference thing here? This is pure ref. I'm changing the seed to make sure I get the right look. Awesome.
feels about right to me. Not perfect, but that's the idea. All right, so those are all the thin wires on that side. Let's just get these guys on the right, okay? So for that, I might just use topo wire as well. Um, let me let me try doing something cool here. Let's see. Let's uh, zoom in. We'll make a. Oh, what's the best way to do this? Let's make a plane. Rotate it 90. Scale it in. And let's just... Scale it up the length of this telephone pole, basically. And we'll go ahead and zero out the width and height segments. Okay, I'm going to make it editable. So now we just have this, like, really thin strip. And we'll go... And let, let's just see. Let's see if this works. Let me copy this, paste it over here, um, make a topo wire and drop both of them in. And let's see. If I go to vertex, all right, it looks like it's going to connect these points here. So if if we chop it if we chop the plane like there, for instance, will it draw a line from okay, it will not draw a line from there unless it needs to be dropped in again. No, nah, it doesn't look like the case. All right, so that test did not work. But that's okay. Let's go back to the spline method. And we'll wrap this guy around this side. And we'll see if we can get maybe some sort of sag in this by changing this to uh, maybe adding a point in the middle. Or, or just maybe maybe make it bezier and adjusting this bit here very subtle and it looks like it's bending there so we need to up the what is it uniform yeah we said it's a uniform Okay, back into camera. And let's rotate this out. Okay, so this point here at the bottom, if we bring this down, it looks like it's coming out from this angle and hitting that corner. Yeah, that's about right. And we'll just copy and paste this up here so this will go maybe up to this point looks about right and it actually looks like this one starts like up here But maybe we'll do a second one. 
no, that actually works. Something like that. And then we have some wires off to this side. So we'll take this sweep and we'll just start duplicating stuff. So I'll go to like a, a side view. Cool, so this view down here. And we'll start duplicating this. And we'll change the thickness of one of these. We'll go like 0.35. Just keep pushing it. Keep scaling. and then back down to 0 0.19. I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with, uh, with light poles and telephone wires. I just love all the detail that goes into them. Sweet. That is awesome. Digging this so far. And we have a couple lines that come out to the side here. So we can probably get that by duplicating these two holding control and just going 180 on them and taking those endpoints one and two go back to top view Grab both of those endpoints there. Let's see, one, two, in point mode. And we'll just pull them up. So it looks like they're cutting across. And these are actually sitting in front. We'll, we'll, we'll move all the wires in front because there's no such thing as a wire going straight into the middle of this thing. They're all just kind of like on the outside of this pole. So we'll move that once we have everything in place because it's really easy for us to, you know, rotate these lines and wires um, from the center point, right? All right, let's check in with you guys. How's everybody doing? Could you add a displacement deformer under the spline to give the jiggle effect? Ah, that'd be an interesting test. Yeah, because if you look here, you can see this like warbly effect here. Um, maybe. You might also be able to do that. Huh, I don't think a displacement. Let's give it a test actually real quick. I would like to test that. So we want to see if we can get that warble effect. And let's just do a spin line oh, we can do an arc whatever that's fine we'll drop a 
circle spline in and we'll just grab both of those hold control alt throw it in a sweep scale the arc down okay so the idea is can we put a deformer in here to get some jiggly some jiggly jigs in here let's see if we hold shift and drop a displacer in okay that doesn't do it but maybe if we group those together like this give it some noise a hey, okay that's promising so that means if we take the global scale to like a thousand all right it's doing a weird thing where it's like making it thicker and skinnier in certain parts so I wonder hmm interesting interesting okay maybe let's take the global scale back down to 200 and we take the height to 0.1 maybe 0.2 we can kind of get some sort of detail in here maybe 0.5 is as far as we want to go but that gives us a little bit of like deformation in the actual pipe that's not bad I wonder if we use a different type of displacer if that would or if we crank the contrast you just don't want to go too intense with it and I wonder actually if there's a way to keep it uniform so we can do um, the noise could be certain type of noise maybe oh that's interesting yeah a lot of experimentation and testing we could do But I'm wondering if there's like a, a certain type of noise that's uniform that will allow us to like get more oh, wavy turbulence maybe. It's not bad. Yeah, that, I mean, it's, it gives you a little bit of something, definitely. So that's an interesting little detail that we might be able to mess with. All right, so let's talk about any other wires, and then we'll place these modules. And we'll do this um, little wire path here, this main one, boom, boom. We'll do that last. But let's get, like... Let's get this bit where it comes here and like loops around a couple times. I wonder if we can do that with uh, top of wire. So let me let me try this. Let me go and spawn a sphere right in here. Too many spheres. Let's move this up. Hop out of camera view. It's going to be a lot easier to see. So this will basically house our, our wires here. Like right in here something like that and then we have a wire going up to this point up here so holding control and just moving this to this point okay 
So let's see if this works. I'm going to scale this sphere way down. Let's maybe actually make this sphere a, a null. I wonder if this will work with a null. Let's take both of those and put it in a top of wire. It looks like it doesn't work with a null. So let's make it a cube, scale the cube way down. So you can kind of see the idea here. We want one line going to a couple circles. So let's go back to top of wire. Let's just set it to like two, maybe 10. And we'll give it some sag. Let's see, uh, under transform. Just a little something like that. Let's pinch the points together. No, we don't need that. Okay. I think we just need we need to work the the distance cut off something like that and then we'll take let's see we'll take the point count down to like 5 Whoa, <laughs> set to vertex. That's intense. So I'm just experimenting and messing around with these wires to see if there's like a an interesting look that works for us. Let's render it and see what it looks like. And we can uh, we can lock our viewport and set this to like 0.5, and so you can actually like see the whole image that you're that you're putting out. So this kind of works. Maybe not my favorite, but you can see how top of wire can help us in certain situations. There is a draw function in C4D. Yeah, um, so you could maybe come into like a side view like this and sketch out like one and two right so those would be your splines and you would just have to line them up so let's see um, hopping out of camera view take those splines something like that and then just give it a uh, that same sweep 
So we'll make a circle, we'll drop those into the sweep, bring the circle way down, something like that, you know, you could do. Yeah, I think you guys get the idea. Okay. Sweet. What's up, Nicholas? Welcome. Welcome to the chat. Okay, so we have most of our wires in place. We just need to add some detail and stuff. Um, specifically, like... This, this bit of wiring here, we need to control. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into top view and I'm gonna hide all of our wires just so we get a clear view of what's going on. Let me, let me get rid of grid view for a second. So we'll go to filter, work plane, and this background we can get rid of too. All right, so we want to create this like cross hatch section of wire. Um, what's the best way to do this? So definitely it's, it's like multiple wires coming from one side I think we definitely have like one foundational wire that's just going there. It's like a little crisscross pattern. Um, This is this is tough. This is just like a lot of detail work here. So we know we want. Let's go into wires. Let's grab our thin wires. Control drag one of these out. Let's just get the foundation right first. Okay. So we'll go to our spline. Grab this line here. So we can see what's going on. And let's just try and line this up by eye for a second. So this point is coming at from the bottom. And this point. is probably going off frame around here, okay? So 
something like that. And I can't tell if the other spline is... It's probably above. It's got to be above. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Welcome, Visual. We are doing splines by hand, and man, it's tough. Oh, okay. Maybe we should use topo wire for this. Like... So if we have the main ones... Right, like this. And we set the radius to like 0.3 on these guys. Or no, I'm going to let the thickness be built up from additional splines. Okay. And then let's grab another one of these. Okay, and it looks like the additional splines are being added to the geometry of wires we already have in place. Okay. <clears throat> so let's bring our back background back in. And let's get this guy in place. Let's work in all of our detail as much as we can here. Um, so I'm going to hop out of camera to get this guy in place. Awesome. All right. So that's close. I just want to get the center point like right, right in here. Boom. Cool. So now we can just rotate this thing. Ah, what? Oh no, I was rotating geometry. That's not good. Um. Wait, I was rotating something in geometry. I see. I want this piece right here. Detail cylinder module. And I want the gizmo to be centered to its midpoints. I'll use the axis center tool. Let's reset this point center and execute. So now it's right in the middle. But why it's not switching? Man, that's tough. Okay, so I'm going to have to do this by hand. Nope, not working. Hmm. Oh, that's working. There it is. All right, that's in place now. So we should be able, no, that, that's tough. Okay. <clears throat> Scorn, dude, appreciate you. Thanks for the super chat. If I add the displaced deformer as a child, the path spline, it should work better, assuming you have enough subdivisions. Add the displaced deformer as a child, um, the pass line, it should work 
better. Okay, so you're saying it can actually deform the spline itself if there's enough subdivisions in the spline. So let's give it a test. This is the test we had. Let's put... Oh, hey, Gilbert. Come here. Hey, bud. Gilbert the cat running around. So you're saying to put the displacer in here. Let's see. Oh, is it, is it moving the spline? It should be moving the spline. We'd like for it to move the spline. We'll just take the contrast up like crazy. Oh, that's, yeah. It's actually moving the spline. That's cool, but it's not moving it left and right. So maybe we change this to, there should be like an option. So that's 2D, but we want it going left and right as well. Yeah, how to get it to go the other direction, I'm not sure, but this is actually pretty promising. This is nice. Um, so then we could change the contrast back to zero, choose a different kind of displacement. and smooth it out so we'll take our arc and give it uh, there we go that's really cool that's fun Oh, that's, that's awesome. And you can probably animate all this stuff, too. It looks like music. Or electricity. Ooh, you could do uh, electricity if you give it, like, um, like an emissive material. Ooh, that could be sweet. That's fun. Thanks, Scorn. Super cool. Nice. Maybe we can mess with that later when we add some detail in here. But let's let's get this main bit down. This is like the, the toughest bit of detail. All right. This guy needs to move. Let's see. Uh, but here's the thing, so this little module, it's not 2D. We actually want to see one side of it like this. So we need to move, that means we need to move this cylinder around. And hopefully if I include this bit, the cylinder module, in the spline, we can just rotate it all together so these two sweep one and two there's just so much stuff going on
We'll zero out all that. And there we go. So now we're actually seeing into that cylinder. Cool. That feels that feels correct. Something like that. Awesome. This is a lot of work, guys. Yeesh. <sighs> I hear you guys on the, the spline thing. I got to focus on just getting these wires placed first. That's the most important thing. Otherwise, we're here till next Christmas. These things always go so long. I'm going to try and get out here in three hours. That gives me one more hour to texture and light and render this thing, but we'll do what we can. Um, also, for, you, for those of you who don't know, next week I'm going to be taking this scene and trying to get um, similar results in Unreal Engine, okay? Because I'm, I'm good with, with Octane and Cinema. I just need I need to apply the same things and get the same quality out of Unreal. So this will be a nice experiment. That's next week, okay? Um, and I'm going to get some volumetric fog, some real-time volumetric fog going, and try and get some particles and flies and... Or not flies. They would be like moths or something um, underneath this light. And it'd be nice to get my phone hooked up to Unreal Engine to be able to film, you know, this this scene all all in real time. So I think that'd be sweet. That's next week. All right. Let's get this last little bit here. I want to rotate this down just a, a hair. Awesome. Okay, so now let's make this intersection this uh this little guy is helping out and there's wires coming out of this curving around this bit right here. Boom boom going this way. So it's this intersection that we need to draw a wire around. Um And there's like I feel like there's a there's a whole bunch of wires and intersection intersectory bits in this, but this square right here is where all of this stuff is really happening. Okay. So let's hop out of the camera and see what's going on. Alright, so this is this is confusing. This is very confusing. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't know oh. I don't know where these wires are in 3D space. That's the issue. It looks like this wire is definitely going off to the left. and connected to this bit. So that's going left and then but but this is taking a hard turn off in this direction. I just need to make sense of this. And it's going down off in that direction. 
So really what's happening is it's coming off of this bit here. And making a turn that way. And then, let's see. Okay, so it looks like there's an intersection And this is not connected to the light pole. It looks like it's actually connected. God, this is confusing. It looks like this is actually connected to this bit here. And it's just coming off of that. And that's what's causing our intersection there. So this would need to be bigger then. This can come up a little bit more. Or no, it wouldn't be up. It would be... Maybe it would be up. So it's doing, it looks like it's doing something like that. Dude, wires are confusing. These get pushed out. Oh no. They need to continue on their on their path otherwise this bit gets off. So something like that and then these guys got to go this way. All right, it's getting closer. Alex, why is my second, or no, Jacob, why is the, the second After Effects icon white? That's because it's After Effects beta. That's where you're getting that Roto Brush 2 for you guys, for those of you guys using After Effects. Um, you can get to it through Creative Cloud and Let's see, on the, I just wanna make sure this thing doesn't have my email or all that stuff. Okay, yeah, should be good. So on the left, you should see beta apps and then you can download After Effects beta. And that's what has Rotobrush 2 hooked up and everything. So definitely be checking that stuff out. I know that um, Winbush put out a tutorial on how to use it. So check out Winbush's channel for that. Okay, let's let's start doing this. Um, let's just go in here and see how this is gonna work. Um, let's take let's take this guy. Control drag him down just a little bit, and we're gonna thicken this wire up times like five. So it's this bottom one. Sweet. All right, this will be under thick wires. And we'll give this like a 0.6. Yeah, so much thicker, all right? Um, and we're just gonna have to start moving these points around.
and we want it to curve into this cylinder here. So I wonder if I can just control drag this. Awesome. And we'll just get it right right in there. I'm hoping I can change the style of this. And actually like maybe I can shift click both of these and go soft. Yeah, and it'll just go right in. Awesome. And we just, you know, we just build it up. So using this as reference, you know, we're just going to keep working on this. Um, so it looks like we have a thicker wire coming out the back end of this. So I can continue this wire through. Um, man, this feels like a Cornelius Domrick render. This is, whew, this is deep. Cool, we got that one point selected. I'm going to control drag it out and through to this side here. And this will actually just go all the way down. All right, so we have, it looks like this module, this box right here. Is fixed to this rung here. And we want to lead some wires from this out to that main little little hub there. Just like this.
All right, so we'll spawn. Let's do a little wire. Um, let's grab a thin wire. I'll bring this down. And I wonder if we can use the transfer tool. We can. Awesome. So we can use the transfer tool on spline points. That's very helpful. We'll grab this guy. And see if we can't... We want to wire it from this point down to the intersection. It looks like this is... Man, this is so deep. This is so deep. Like, the de the amount of detail on this is honestly scary and painful. There's got to be an easier way. It's just too much. All right, so we got that there. Let's see if we can't connect this down into, actually down and around. So we'll go here. I'm gonna control drag out a little bit. just connect it here to this bit and send it down the line And then hopefully we should be able to take that spline and set it to like cubic. Nope. B spline kind of works. Um, maybe linear and then just selecting these two corner ones and setting them to soft is, yeah, looks like the best way to go. Let's go back into camera and see what we got. Oh my goodness. Oh. That is that is tough, guys. We have so much to do to get this. And I don't think we can do it here on the stream. This is just hours and hours of work. You guys see how much time is put into this stuff. Oh. Maybe it'd be worthwhile to put together some like sort of construction wire plug-in for Cinema 4D something where like you can easily draw something out there's got to be a workflow for this it'd be nice to figure that out but I don't think I'm going to figure it out here today on the stream but you guys get the idea you can see how intense this this whole wire setup can be I I think I'm going to Maybe just drop one more wire in across the top and then move on to texturing and lighting. 
because I need to get out of here by one at least so I can get on that custom HDRI tutorial for you guys. It goes live on Tuesday. All right, visual. He says, I think what might have helped would have been building the light and wires at right angles like they would be in real life and then messing with your camera to get the perspective. Yeah, I, I think so, man. Yeah, getting the right angles and, and then tweaking it from there because like there are some angles that are off but for the most part yeah i think the right angle method is probably the way to go on this yeah and just build it all out from like a top view you know build out a couple different structures from top view All right, I'm going to do one last one last wire. I'm just going to like take this guy. We'll duplicate. And I'm going to just change the thickness. And we'll do the same for this one here. And we can always come back in and add all that good detail that really makes this feel real, you know. Um, lastly, I'm going to just get in here and make sure that this stuff is included because I modeled it, modeled it out, you know. Um, so might as well add that stuff. Okay. Um, Evolver. Yo. What's up, Chris? Thank you, sir. I appreciate you very much very very much you've been very kind to me you've helped me out with unreal engine helping me get that photo real look i'm trying to go for man so thank you so much next week i'm dropping this scene into unreal to try and bring it to the next level but we're gonna we're gonna light it and texture it here in octane right now at least after i get these little bits in place so real quick let me just go to my geometry detail and it should be in here somewhere fastener yeah, it's this fastener. All right. So I'm going to hop out of the camera and just place these things around. So roughly we got one there. We got one here and we got one up here. Cool. Um, and then I want to take these blinds and make sure that the wires are actually in front of this pole. So I'm going to grab these points right in the middle and bring them out. And yeah, these these are definitely on right angles. Oh, John Malcolm, okay, perspective crop in Photoshop to flatten out the wire layout to make a a plan view might actually have helped. That's a cool idea. Down for that. And then you can actually import the splines from Photoshop. Man, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Mm. I was using it for the corridor um, domino video too. Man, definitely the way to go. I might, I might redo this when I have some free time. This week is going to be insane. I'm trying to crank hard so I can go on vacation next week. Oh, um, all right, let's just keep tweaking these last little bits.
cool. All right. Um, let's get these backside ones here. Might be able to select all three at once. All right, last bit. I'm going to place this guy. That'll do it. Okay, let's uh, let's light and texture this thing. So, as far as lighting goes, personally, I enjoy this lighting setup right here. Um, I like to see. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like the opposite. You know, it's you have the light background with the dark wires. This one, you have the dark background with the light wires. So it all kind of depends on the vibe we want to go for, but I want to try and get this look right now. All right. So let's start texturing this thing. I'm first, I'm going to start with uh, just by going to bridge and grabbing this like wood beam texture. And they might have, I mean, I was looking for something like a light post or a light pole but they don't really have one they have square ones but we'll find something all right oh nice we got some classic horse manure a green bell pepper this trash can doesn't look that good honestly Huh, I'm, I am surprised. Whoa! Yes, ice cliffs. Yes. Ginger. Yes, I love ginger. Dude, Mega Scans is the best. Yo! They got snowy stuff. All right. I love it when they put out new stuff. cool they got daggers all right now we're back to the normal stuff okay so let's try 3d assets I, I may have actually saved some of these um hmm favorites maybe no okay 3d assets wood I think it was like all the way at the bottom
you have like these, these old boards, and then you have these guys right here, the worn wooden beams. And you might be able to use this and kind of stack them up. So they're about a little taller than a person. So you could probably get away with three or four, stacking three or four to get this look. Um, otherwise, like we could just look for a, let me actually, let me heart these, favorite these in case we want to come back. Um, we could do a, just a surface. So instead of 3D assets, we just go to surfaces and we go to wood. I guess it would be um, other. And we need something really worn down. And none of these really feel like they're doing it for me. Maybe bored. But I still feel like, no, this isn't going to work for us. Log. All right, here we go. But it's like one log. It's not just a bunch of logs. This might work. Old log wall might work for us. This one, this one here. Yeah, this might work for us. We just don't want to make sure it's tiled too closely. We want something a little larger. So... We can search for all sizes. We can search for like a meter to two, maybe two to four meters. And it looks like we only have a meter to two to work with, which we might be better off just using the 3D scan. Hmm. Let's try the 3D scan. So let's go back to the favorites here. Let's grab these guys. Download settings. We want material preset for it's offline specular. Lot zero level of detail. Yeah, we want all that good stuff. Let's download it. We'll do the same here. And download it. So we'll let that do its thing. Um, anything else? I think I think the other stuff we can actually use Grayscale Gorilla's Everyday Material Pack, and you know just get that metal going. So maybe we'll. Uh, I think I lost connection for a second. I should be back. If you guys hear me, just give me a little thumbs up. I, th I think I'm I'm good to go. Um, but yeah, if you guys are using Octane, you have access to the Live DB Viewer here. So we'll open that up. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So this is the Live DB Viewer. Um, you can search anything you want with Octane. And there's like a whole bunch of textures made by the community for you to download. But I'm going to be using the, uh, the Everyday Materials Collection from Grayscale Gorilla. And once this is done freezing, here we go, car paint. Let's just go to Metal and grab some worn something. We could try this Rusted Metal 06 right here. Let's try this guy. So I'm going to right click, download it. It'll pop right in. And then we'll try this iron corroded look too. We'll download that. Sweet. So they're just right down here. And we drop, just drop them on. Let's actually hop out of camera view to see what's going on. Now we need to get the mapping correct. So I'm going to go into the material. And we want to adjust the way it's projected. So I'm going to grab a projection node and just pipe 
the projection node and all these guys and we're just going to set it to box and that's going to flatten it out and make it look real nice so you can see how it just makes it a bit more uniform right and did we bevel this we didn't wait i feel like we did not bevel this thing we did apparently I guess we did. Let's grab these guys. And we can honestly just hit it with like a matte black. Point 0.1 down the board, roughness we can go like point 0.3, maybe point 0.01 is closer to what we're going for. Yeah, it, it just basically black out those little bits, but I'm leaving a little bit of gloss so we can catch some of the light there. Um, these metal steps, these look to be... Let's see here. A little glossy, definitely rusted and crusty. So let me grab that iron and do the same projection tweak to these. And we'll just distribute these two textures across all of our like metal detail. Okay. Very nice. And we can Oh, that's that's really nice. I feel like that's more like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me let me see here. Ladder rungs. I'm just going to apply that rusted material to the entire ladder rung cloner. And it looks like it needs to be scaled way down. So we'll take the tiling up to like 10, maybe 100. Is that doing anything? Okay, maybe it just needs to go back to one. Yep, very nice. All right. Let's get like a rubber material for this like, or a plastic for these two, these little housings. So I'm gonna go back into the live DB viewer. And let's go to, what would it be, organics? Or where is it, plastics maybe? Like a black plastic aged, that's not bad. Or this rubber. Maybe I'm going to try for the rubber and we'll hop into here and we'll definitely give the rubber that, uh, that projection adjustment. That's the only thing with all of these, you just need to give it the projection adjustment. So it works properly. Boom. Okay, and we'll apply this to this guy. So that's shining nicely. And I swear I had some top pieces with this. Like, where did they go? Oh, they just didn't get scaled up or anything. Um, maybe we'll grab those and scale them up a little bit. There we go. Cool. And then we'll do the same for this guy over here. Boom. So that's shining nicely. 
cool. And I think we can just apply this material to the wires too because it looks like a nice little wire material. I like it a lot. So let's just take everything that makes up these wires, okay? And I'm going to apply this rubber material to the wires. So it has a nice like glossy material set up like that. Okay, so far so good. Let's get this little module, this box here, which is just floating in the air, I guess. Oh, because uh, I moved that one wire. Okay, yeah. Let's adjust this. The wire box, cool. And then we'll take this spline. And adjust that as well. Yeah, right about there. Sweet. Why is my RTX off? You know, I just got this RTX card. How do I... What do you mean off? How do I turn it on? Jacob, help me. Yeah, what do you mean? The stream is lagging. Are you guys doing all right? Octane device settings. Settings, post settings, account, other. I might just have to look this up later. Unless you can tell me exactly where it is. Device. GPU. Um, render priority. Device settings. I have never been in this menu. Use RTX acceleration. Nice. Yeah, I've never been in this menu. Well, let me know. Um, whoa. Wait, what? Well, that's way faster. Crazy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. And just texturing these guys up. Awesome. All right. And then for the actual light pole, I'm going to copy the iron texture and tweak it a little bit. Because it's a bit too shiny.
Because we want to go for more of like a plastic look. Alright, so let's open up this iron. I'm just going to put this up into this window here. Cool. Alright, so... I just want to adjust the roughness. So we'll take the roughness up to like... 2.5 or something and we'll take the RGB and I want to just drop some of the contrast so I'll do a color correction actually it's probably going to be more of a gradient And we'll take the black and make it a dark gray instead. Cool. All right, let's hop back into camera view and see what we're looking at. Now the last thing is definitely the wood um, pole here. So we want to make sure we get that right. Um, let's go back to bridge and see, yep, our materials are downloaded. Now we just need to export them, right? So we'll go to export settings. We don't want Unreal right now. We want Cinema 4D. Yep, yep. We'll grab both of those and export you guys hanging in doing all right we're almost done here we're gonna wrap up the texture get the lighting nice and then we'll export and, and or rather we'll render and while we render um i'll announce the winners of this week's um i always forget the <laughs> of this week's weekly challenge. I will announce the winners of this week's weekly challenge and issue out the next challenge. And then we'll just uh, maybe drop the render into Photoshop and see what we can do and call it a day. All right, so those are importing in right now. All right, so we got our wood beam in here. It doesn't actually look that nice. I wonder why. Usually octane or usually uh Huh. Mega scans is looking real nice. Hmm. 
Maybe we will have to go with the service because this does not look good. Now it might be my lighting, so let me let me just give it a shot here. Um, let's take our centerpiece. All right, and then we'll we'll actually zero out. Let's hide the centerpiece. Let's zero this back out. And we want to scale this up so it matches the original size. Okay. We'd have to hide that with a bunch of stuff. I, I think I'm just going to find a surface that works better for us. So, you know, we looked we looked at Mega Scans. We didn't really find much. Let's see if RD Textures will help us. So, let's go Textures, Real Displacement Textures. And, like, let's look at their overview here and find their wood. Um... Shoot, I may not have their wood materials. Yeah, it doesn't look like the case. Let's try polygon. Good old Andrew Price. Go to wood. Um, old wood. No, not really. What's an other? No. Planks, maybe. Nah, I think bridge is probably our best bet now. So let's go back to wood and I believe it was plank it was one of these at least I'm pretty sure it was one of these It's Gilbert. <laughs> uh, oh. Hey, bud. Oh. We're trying to find our wood texture. Hey, Gilbert. Oh, hey, bud. Mm. All right, let's try and find this wood. <laughs> All right, I think it was on our board. Wooden paneling. This might work. Um, let's download this. Yeah, that's a good one. And then maybe there's another. I guess that's the one, huh? That's the one. 
Let's give it a shot. Oh. And export. Sweet. Oh, man. 19-year-old cat. That's crazy. Gilbert is not even one yet. My my other cat passed at about 10. And that was last year. So that's awesome. We have a 19-year-old cat. That is crazy. Huh? Noah? No, he was 10. Okay. Let's get that um, cylinder back in here. Boom. All right. Let me hide the floor. And let's see if we can't get something nice going here. Drop the wood texture on. And the mapping is is off. So let's go in. I'm going to change this to octane glossy let's go in here and we just need to put that projection node on all this stuff and set the projection to box that way it kind of makes everything uniform and when you have displacement hooked up in octane it will not work oh actually wait no I have to do this the other way oh, wait no there is no displacement never mind we're good But maybe I, I think for this I need displacement. Yeah, I think we need displacement for this one. So in that case, this box projection will not work. We'll throw a displacement node down and we'll link up our displacement okay so now let's see let's set the mid-level to 0. 0.5 and we'll set it to 8k resolution height of four inches yeah that's fine for now let's go to the material here in our objects panel And let's scale it down here, okay? Hmm. Let's set that to, I don't know, let's try cubic. Yep, that already looks nicer. And I wonder if we can scale it. So let's try tiling it twice. Or maybe 1.5. We don't want to see the repetitions. All right, we'll take the iron. And I want to darken up this texture a little bit. It's a little too bright for me. And I might actually brighten up the wood. Man, you really can't beat this this worn um, wooden post, this wooden beam. I think really the best way to do this is like 
either go to RD Textures and download some of their stuff or photo scan something yourself because that, that's really nice. I'm certainly missing that here. And I think getting that right, getting that detail is really going to help bring this whole thing together. But we'll see what we can do here. Again, lighting wise, I want to go for something more like this. All right, so let's set our background color or even our octane sky. Let's just set our octane sky to a color instead. And I'm just going to sample, yep, that dark gray there. And I'm really going to crank this light. So this is an emissive texture, but we want to get it something like this. And we might even have to cheat it, but we'll, we'll see here. Nah, this is perfect. The light is right above all this stuff. It should catch it real nice. So we'll go to the emissive material. And let's... crank this to like a thousand already that's looking cool it's catching those those bits nicely and I'm also wondering too we can probably cheat it where we do um, let me actually add an octane camera this is my favorite part once we have everything ready to go and lighting once we get to lighting ooh, this is where it all comes together let's check the camera imager tab I always, uh, maybe maybe we can do a color correction bit. We can do like Kodachrome. Okay, that's, yeah, definitely too intense. But that's because I think we have to go to 2.2. Yeah. Sweet. All right, we'll do saturate to white. Um, we'll set that to 0 0.2. Because if I give the light kind of a greenish tint let's see we can tint the light actually and but we want glow so I'm gonna go to post-processing and glare blur we'll set the one and let's do bloom power of like five so this is too blown out obviously and we want something more along the lines of this right here so maybe 2.5 and it would just be 2.5 divided by 2 so like 1.75 but that star is really intense And you'd want to get this close. Um, I know that uh, that Unreal Engine has a really nice lens flare kind of effect. Maybe we angle this. Yeah, something like that. Or we go somewhere like that. You know, you can mess with that stuff. But maybe we give it like kind of an anamorphic look. Um, but let's change the color of this light. So let's go into our node editor and grab an RGB spectrum. And we'll give it like a. Let's see. 
We'll set this to kind of like a tungsten. Cool. Yeah. Um, maybe dial it back a little bit. We can try green, like a fluorescent. That's kind of cool. I feel like our bloom is a little intense. That's cool. I want to be able to see the detail in there, you know? All right, this is looking cool. I like this. So adding some fog will actually really make this nice. Um, but before we do that, I just want to see if I can't beef up this light a little bit more. So I'm going to make an octane area light. And let's see if we can't. Yeah, let's just make an octane area light. Let's bring it up. Like two meters. I want to get it right in place. You know, uh, there's a better way to do this. I'm going to click that light right there, the lamp post, hold control, then make. Oh, it won't work. Weird. We'll use the transfer tool. That won't work. Weird. All right. Um, we'll just manually get this light in place then, I guess. Something like that. Rotate it 90. And then come up with it. And we'll give it a, uh, a spherical kind of map here. Let's do, what is it? Details rectangle. Um, disc. That works. So it's just kind of beefing up the light. And we can go to visibility and make it just not camera visible, right? And we'll, when it, we'll want to make sure that the light color matches with our emissive color. So I'll take this um, RGB spectrum, copy it, go to our light node view, paste it in, and just make sure we pop that into texture so it's the same color. Now, there is a way to do volumetric lighting here. Um, let me see. I actually think it's with a, with a spotlight, an octane spotlight. But maybe what we can do is give it a little fog volume. So let's save it. And actually, I'm going to give it just a bit of vignette. That's nice. Cool. And then for the fog volume, basically we'll make a uh, object octane fog volume. Let's pause the renderer for a second and hop out of camera view. And when I make an octane fog volume, it will crash your system pretty quick. So Take the voxel size editor up to like 100 and let's get this fog right under the light and fill our scene with it. Just grow these bounds here. Something like that. Then we can hide the fog volume from view, hop back into camera view and we just want something very subtle here. So right off the top it just turns black because it's so thick um, so we'll go to medium hop in here set the density to like 0.1 that's way too much 
Um, so scattering and absorption. Let's. We might be able to leave those as is, but we'll take density to 0 0.01. 0 0.002 maybe. And just something very, very subtle up here is going to go a long way. And the beauty of Unreal Engine is the fact that it does this kind of stuff so fast. Um, it knocks it out immediately. So that'll be next week. We'll go over how to do that in Octane. But this isn't bad, you know, like we can definitely do with a, a lot more wires. Um, I'm wondering if instead of a volume, we could do um, an octane spotlight. And we'll move the octane spotlight right underneath. You can see how it by default comes in with like this volumetric effect. You can actually control the spread. But let's see if we have any control over this volumetric effect here. Um, we definitely, let's see, visibility. I guess it needs to be visible. I haven't really used these too much, so I don't know what effect to mess with. Um, and I don't know if it's under light settings. Oh yeah, uh, no. The light medium. So it's a similar setup. Uh, but I'm not the biggest fan of that. It doesn't look doesn't really look good. Let's bring our volume back in. And I think the rest we can do in Photoshop with some color correction. I'm just messing with my light settings, the intensity of the light and everything. It's actually really cool. Now, I don't use denoiser too much because I do like the, um, I'll, I'll only use the denoiser if I'm in a rush. Obviously, I'm, I'm not really in a rush. Um, so I'm going to let this render here, um, and then we'll, we'll make it look nice in Photoshop. So let me just set this up. We'll do like, uh, I don't know, 2000 by... 1200 current frame I 
I'll leave the vignette for Photoshop. So I'll get rid of it here. And samples will do Oops. Um, wait, where, where am I going here? There we go. We'll do 1,500 samples. Adaptive sampling. All right. All right, so we'll let that go. And in the meantime, it's time to announce the weekly challenge winners. All right. And yeah, I'll definitely put the final render on Discord. We'll let this go, we'll let this do its thing. So, all right. This week, um, or I guess last week, I issued the challenge of doing a macro render of an insect. And it was actually one of your guys' suggestions here on the stream. I think we'll do it this way every time where we'll just kind of suggest some, some things. You guys will leave your suggestions and we'll pick one from there. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the five winners of this week's weekly challenge and the cool work that they put out. There's some really creepy stuff, some creepy crawlies. All right. Macro insects, here we go. All right. So first off, this is somebody who consistently wins these things because the work they put out is just really, really nice. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll kick it off with visual. Very nice render of a ladybug, very simple. I like it a lot. Um, I love your colors. The green and red, the classic contrast in nature. It's very nice. I wonder if you did like the UV paint tool in Cinema 4D here to get these. That looks really cool. Yeah, and I love your camera settings. Everything's looking really nice. And like it does feel like this is uh, a little like noisy, but I, I like that. And, and I think you actually added some noise to your render, and I really do enjoy that because it makes it feel real. It really does. And that's something that we're going to be doing in Photoshop when my render is finished is adding some noise and stuff and some grain. But this almost looks like, like lens flare dust. I love it. It's really nice. Very nice touch. Um, yeah, I could totally see this as like, a, as like an iPhone background or something. So visual, congratulations. You are a challenge winner this week and hey it's Melanie what's up thank you for the super chat you're the best I appreciate you she says hello there I hope you're doing well and are healthy I saw the Adobe care stream the other day and it looked like Adobe made a cameo with you guys when the stream froze um, yeah I think I kicked a wire or something and it just like knocked the stream out it was really funny and I'm glad we saved it we got it back but yeah that was a good time um, but yeah visual Congrats, you are a challenge winner this week once again. Okay, next up, we have someone who you guys may recognize, and that is Ice Cream Paint Job. Really gross. Yeah, this is um, nasty. There's a ton of ants eating this M&M, and if any of you guys recognize the M&M, then go ahead and give a little thumbs up in the chat. Um, but, uh, I love how you added motion blur to this again, another really good small detail to take it away from that clean render look. Um, but here's the thing. It looks like you added motion blur on top of your film grain. Your film grain 
should be on top of your motion blur. The grain is never blurry. It's just the image, and then your grain comes on after the fact. So that's just a tiny little detail to watch out for. But I do love the motion blur detail. These ants look disgusting. They're getting all up in here. Um, nice color. Yeah, great composition. And it gives me uh, some tingles. Really gross. So congrats, Ice Cream Paint Job. You are a winner this week once again. Keep up the good work, man. You guys are doing amazing stuff. Um, next up, we have M M Design, M Design, and they put together this hilarious Spider-Man spider. This is so cool, very unique. I I just love this. This is great. Yeah, this is this is an awesome render. I love your colors. Your render quality is very nice. Your lighting is very nice. Um, the background is you know blurred out looking good it looks like you also have some grain going on here some nice film grain um, maybe this is a little too clipped and saturated here these lights I'm seeing these rings of blue um, but that's okay hey you got it looks like you got water along the spider web this is great it looks like you like scattered some uh, scattered some spheres across like the geometry and the vertex points of of this web that's a really nice touch very good but yeah look at the materials on this thing it's really good the way it catches the light and it actually has this like hexagon he hexagonal is that the word hexagonal pattern across the top of it yeah M Design, great work congratulations you are our winner of the weekly challenge this week keep it up keep it up everybody you guys are doing a great job awesome okay um so another winner this week is also a spider render there's a lot of spider renders a lot of good spider renders um and it was tough to choose from because there was there's there a lot of really good ones so this guy here david katz put this together and this is incredible this is so good the render quality is ridiculous you have some dust and atmosphere in this in the air. Amazing. Your spider webs are really nice. I don't know what you used for that, but it looks great. You have hair across the spider. It's disgusting. Your materials are really nice. You know, maybe see a little bit of geometry here, but I think that's okay. I can't tell. Did you add any grain? It's hard to say because there's a lot of particles in the air and stuff. Um... But yeah, your camera settings are really nice. Your depth of field is great. You got this screw right in here. It looks like, I don't know why that's so dark down here. So definitely watch out for that next time. Um, and then you have these little baby spiders running around. This is so good. Congratulations, uh, David Katz. You are a challenge winner this week. You should be proud. Keep it up. Okay, and our last winner for this week put together something absolutely incredible. I love it so much, and it is this image right here by BDB400. I love the colors on this. It almost looks like a normal map and no diffuse, but it looks so cool. It's metallic. The detail is insane in this. It's really, really nicely put together. You got the fur and the hair going here on this fly and it's on this branch the depth of the depth of field is really really nice here um, and the muted background colors really bring out this fly I mean, you can't miss it obviously it's like the main focus of the thing but it stands out so much because the colors of the fly are contrasted really well with the background here so congrats um, BDB 400 you are a challenge winner this week I think this might be your first win of all time so congrats all of these renders will be up on the Discord server in the challenge winner um, channel, right? Join the server. Link is in the description if you aren't already. It's really fun. Join these challenges, right? So in the past, there's been a number of prizes. And I'm working to get more prizes for you guys because it's really fun and it gives people incentive to create. Even though you shouldn't be creating for the prize, you should be creating to learn and because it's fun, because you enjoy it. You know, you, you guys are here, you know. So um, 
what do you guys want to do for a challenge? Let's figure out the challenge this week. I am open to suggestions. Hit me up. In the meantime, let's take this render and bring it into Photoshop and tweak a little bit of the colors. And while we do that, I might actually render out another one with a lot higher um, samples. So let's try 3,500. And we'll render that, but not overwrite. Render two. All right, so let's bring this in. Awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drop in some film grain. So I just have like an overlay, I just Googled film grain texture Let's see, where are you? Tmax 100. And I just set that to overlay. But you have to make sure it's rasterized first. Oh, we must be in some sort of weird like 32 bit. Yeah, we just. Let's try 16 bit. Or 8 bit. Nah, let's go 16 because we want to adjust the color, have the most control over our image. Then we set it to overlay. And then we have some like nice film grain here. And I'll definitely want to blur it a little bit. So I'll go filter, blur, a Gaussian blur is totally fine. But like 0.1, or even 0.5. Point two five, just something to get away from like that very obvious like CG feel, you know. Okay, so taking a look back in the chat here, and we're talking about weekly challenges. So let's just start reading off some of this food renders. We did ramen at one point. That was really fun. Animation, armor, stairs. Oh, theme, stairs. That's actually pretty cool. Stairs could be sweet. Um, what, about a, what about a story in a genre? Okay, interesting. I feel like every, every good render has a story to it. Um, so there's always a chance to add story to your renders. Dinosaurs, Le ooh, Lego. Lego, that's a good one. Oh man, okay, dragon, nighttime environment, some footprints, video game props, still life, guns, cave, optical illusion. Oh man, optical illusion. We did the chrome ball one. Kind of an optical illusion, not really. A mini planet, we did a planet. Okay, um, I'm really digging Lego and stairs, the, the stair theme. But I think Lego is going to be a lot more open. So I'm just going to say Lego is the challenge for this week. You guys have one week to render some Legos. Um, build your render with Legos only. Lego bricks only. Um, as if you put together, like your render, it should, it should fit into the Lego movie. All right. You can only use Lego pieces. Render it however you want. Light it however you want. Build anything you want. 
but just make sure it's only made from Legos, all right? I really look forward to your guys' renders this week for that because, man, I used to love playing with Legos. I mean, I still love playing with Legos. I think they're the best. Um, yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be really good. And I'm wondering if we can work out a prize. Hmm. Maybe... Maybe whoever wins this gets like a $20 credit or maybe $25 credit to a Lego of their choice. And I'll send it to you if you don't live like in Australia because shipping is expensive. We'll figure that one out. But it'd be cool to send like a little Lego prize or something. Or a Lego version of you, maybe. I don't know. Um, let me do some research on that. No promises yet. But I think if you live close by-ish, um, so that shipping isn't ridiculous, you know, I, I might send like the first place. I can't send all five, but maybe first place gets like a, a little Lego or something. So we'll have to figure that one out. But check out the Discord server. The link is in the description. I'm going to leave the rules and everything uh, for this challenge right in the, uh, the weekly challenge channel. Man, this is a mouthful. I'm just talking a whole lot. My jaw hurts. My butt hurts. I need to get lunch. Let's bring in this render. The, the, the high quality one just finished. <laughs> Not really much of a difference there. Yeah, there's a little bit. You can see a little bit there. It's definitely finer. I'll do one more. And we'll actually add the denoiser. So let's enable that denoiser. And let's go, yeah, 3500 again. Render three, and then an octane render, you want to make sure under main that you use Denoise Beauty Pass. So you check that. Give that a render. And how long did that take? Uh, picture viewer, there you are. Only five minutes, all right. So we'll check back in five minutes. We'll tweak this image here. And we'll try and do it with adjustment layers so we can just swap out our image. All right, so. What should we do? Vibrance. Maybe we crank the vibrance a little bit. And then we do maybe. Hmm, some curves. Let's mess with the curves. little something like that just makes it pop a little bit all right and let's see if we can't do like uh, I say so I would adjust this in Adobe Camera Raw but I want to update the picture so Tom, yo, thanks for the super chat, man. Yeah, the Discord is fun. Make it make it your own. Have fun inside. There's a lot of different things for everybody, so um, it's definitely a good time. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you. Oh, man, merch as the prize. I need, I need some merchandise. 
here's the thing though if i had merchandise what would you guys want to buy would you guys buy t-shirts would you guys buy stickers would you i don't even know i have no idea i know that i'm releasing that custom hdri pack on tuesday along with the custom hdri tutorial but that's not really merch it's just kind of like a digital product dude this image is looking nice like this is this is good Let's adjust the hue and saturation. Let's take the greens down just a little bit. And some of the yellow. Like this, this is this is pretty sweet. I'd like to sci-fi this out just a little bit. I think that'd be nice. Um, I don't know how exactly, but I think it's probably with more geometry than with like photoshopping I, I might be able to add some like lights along these wires and stuff but man look how good this turned out this here like this up here this is, this is really nice um let's add a vignette yeah definitely got to add the vignette oh man t-shirts you guys buy t-shirts Ooh, Carlos. Yeah, dude, let me know. Let me know. Um, I hadn't updated the print shop in a while, but what I want to do is actually throw in some of my CG renders to the print shop. So if you guys wanted to purchase some of my CG renders that you like, you can get those from the print shop, print them out, make them look really nice for you. Um, T-shirts are always great. Okay, uh, stickers and masks. Um... <laughs> Gilbert and Teddy fan art. Kim likes that a lot. <laughs> She's nodding and saying yes. <laughs> please. please. She said please. Make sure you say please. Okay. Let's add our vignette and let's add a little uh, lens flare here. Okay. So. Doo -doo -doo. Um, vignette. You know what? I'm going to go crazy. Just in general. I kind of want to take this into After Effects. This is my janky way of doing lens flares. All right, let's save it. PNG. Sure, that's fine. Let's open up After Effects. And I'm going to use optical flares for this lens flare. Yay! Uh, John Kari, thank you for the super chat. You guys are awesome. This is, this is like the most super chats I've ever got, minus that one time I did all those frog jumps and then blew out my knee the day a day later. Um, but, yeah, I'm glad that just the educational part of things inspires you guys to, to help out a little bit. So I appreciate that. I'm glad you've been learning a whole bunch of these live streams, man. That's the whole point. Yeah. Hey, Gilbert. Hey, bud. We're almost done. We're going to add a lens flare. It's going to look real nice. What do you think about that? Okay. Um. All right. So you guys say wallpapers. I don't know how I feel about that. Selling digital wallpapers. You know, that's... How do you... Like, how do you... First off, how do you prevent people from just like, you know, uploading that and then it's over and then it's like, okay, well, what's the point? And then also like, shouldn't those just be free anyway? Like, I don't know. But then with the print shop, you don't want to have a wallpaper so large that like people just can make their own prints, you know? So I, I'm conflicted on that. I don't know if you guys would buy a wallpaper, what, it, what would you, what would you spend on a wallpaper? Like a buck, 250 or something. It'd have to come with a phone and a desktop pack. It'd have to be like both, you know? Um, <laughs> but okay, let's, let's try and open up uh, this texture and do the lens flare real quick. Oh, 
Oh man, this looks awesome. Okay, let's do a black solid and we'll go optical flares and we'll go to options and let's just find the flare we want. I mean, light is a good one because it's natural. Hmm. So we want to match that. Natural flares, here we go. There's so many options. Andrew Kramer, man, putting it together. Yeah, Gullius, I, I feel you on that, man. All right, so maybe we do this one, but we just take out all the ridiculous streaks. So if you guys have never used Optical Flares, it's a really powerful program. So we can hide all, like, everything here that makes up this, uh, this lens flare, you can check on and off. So I'm just gonna go through here and uncheck all of the really sharp bits that make this thing up. And I kinda just want like, hmm. I'm still undecided on the one I want too. Maybe this one. Let's let's see what this does. So I'm just gonna set this to uh, to screen. We'll put it right in here. And something like something like that would be nice but it's not the right kind of lens flare. We want something else. So maybe there's something, oh, this one's maybe not bad. Uh, yeah, these are all just too intense. I know for a fact we'll definitely need to like bring down the intensity on these. This one is subtle, but I feel like the colors aren't right. So we can change the color here to more of like a tungsten greenish and then we could take this glow and bring the brightness down but this purple is killing me right in here so maybe we just lose that bit but that doesn't look right. That just doesn't look right. I feel like having real lens flares would be the best way to go. I don't really know of any online. So if you guys know of any like lens flare packs, let me know, I'll look into it. This one is subtle. So maybe we just get rid of the really intense bits that make this up. All right, that's not bad. I think I like that. It's it's subtle. And maybe what we can do is just take any sort of large glow out. So it's just, yeah, just that bit right there. And I'll change the color to more of like a greenish Yeah, very subtle.
Awesome. Um, let's check. Oh, let's add our vignette real quick. So I'll make a new black solid. I'm going to hit Control Y. And if you double click the ellipse tool, it'll just make a perfect ellipse. Set it to subtract. F for feather. Control Shift H to hide the mask. And we'll just feather this out about like there. And we'll set this to overlay and drop the opacity something like that feels right maybe work the feather a little bit more that looks legit awesome back in cinema let's see if our render kicked out not that big of a difference. Honestly, it's not even worth updating. Um, so you guys will see next week in Unreal Engine how easy it is to get this volumetric fog going. And I do want to get some particles going up against the light post here so we can see like little, little moths flying around. And then I'd like to hook my phone up to Unreal Engine so we could maybe film a little walk by or film just like a static scene of, of this little bit that we set up here. And maybe throughout the week, again, it's going to be a very busy week for me, but if I have time, I might add a bit more wire detail and stuff. But this has been fun, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad that you guys are learning stuff. Along with myself, I'm learning as I'm going to. That's the whole point of all this. You learn through doing it. And I'll definitely be saving this and posting this to my Instagram. So if you guys don't follow me on Instagram... That's underscore, Punisher, underscore. Boom, right down there. And uh, what else? Yeah, guys, stick around because Tuesday, um, I'm going to go live on Maxon's YouTube channel, Cinema 4D's YouTube channel. If you go to, I think, 3dmotionshow.com or maxon.net, you guys will be able to follow the link, and you'll see me live on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time breaking down my entire photorealism um, compositing workflow. So when you shoot your footage and you want to put real stuff into it, I'm breaking down that whole thing. It's only a 55-minute stream, and then I'm doing a live Q&A with Matthias afterwards for about 30 minutes. So definitely do not miss that. Um, and I will upload that to my YouTube channel about a week after it goes live, okay? Um, so probably next, next Tuesday. And... Same day on that Tuesday, all right? That's we're talking Tuesday, uh, the 21st, a few days from now. I'm posting the custom HDRI tutorial, walking you guys through how to create your own custom HDRIs. And at the end of that, I'll be selling a, uh, a custom HDRI pack that I put together. And it's themed in like the war zone battlefield style where it's like all post apocalyptic and stuff. We got HDRIs in you know, crashed helicopters, crashed airplanes, the Middle East kind of style. We got uh, military trucks and all that in the sewers, all that good stuff. So I try to get a, a unique twist on the HDRI packs because there's a million out online. But it's more just a way if you guys want to help support um, the cause here and, and, and support more videos like the custom HDRI tutorial or more streams like this. I think I'm just going to drop it for like like eight bucks or something. Um, you guys can pick that up if, you, if you'd like. But uh, I appreciate you all. Visual, you rock, man. Uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, thanks for doing all this. Uh, it's been an incredibly hard time for me besides COVID-19 and these weekly challenges are so awesome. Um, uh, the community is unmatched. Keep it up. Dude, I am really, really glad that this is helping out. It's so much fun. Um, and... And I hope it will continue to be in the future. I know it will be in the future. So keep it up. Hang in there, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Get outside. Go for a walk or something. And I'll see you guys uh, on Tuesday on the, uh, what is it? It's either Maxon's YouTube channel or Cinema 4D's YouTube channel. Tuesday at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. I'll post the link in the announcements on the Discord channel. So don't miss that. Let's and fill up that live stream let's take it by storm um i've talked too much at this point so i'm gonna leave but i appreciate you guys thank you so much 
I'll catch y'all later. Peace. Have a good one. I can't end the stream because my mouse is broken. I straight up can't click. What's going on? What's up, guys? Wow. Something is... Control-Alt-Delete. Okay. Bye. <laughs>